talk about what happens at menopause and why the menopausal change is so associated with weight gain. To understand what happens, we first need to go through um, understanding the general female cycle that occurs in a young woman. So what you're looking at here is you're looking at several things. Down here at the bottom, you're going to see uh, the uterine lining. Um, so this is the lining of the uterus and how it changes over the menstrual cycle. And what you'll typically see over here at the beginning of menses, which is day one of the cycle, you'll see the uterine lining shedding. And if you look here, you'll see E2 here and P. E2 is estradiol or estrogen, and P is progesterone. You'll see the progesterone is flat at the beginning of the cycle during the first 14 days. In fact, young women have the same amount of progesterone in their body as men do prior to ovulation. So you can see progesterone being low here. But you also can see that E2 or estradiol, estrogen, slowly rises over the course of the menstrual cycle over the first 14 days and peaks right around ovulation. If you look above that, you'll see sort of the ovarian cycle and you'll see the maturation of the follicle. So the follicle is the area that holds the egg and under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, this FSH and LH here at the top, the follicle will mature. So that just at ovulation, what happens is you get an LH or luteinizing hormone surge. This hormone, luteinizing hormone, kicks in, causing ovulation, causing the follicle to rupture and the egg to be released. At that point in time, you'll see that under the influence of estrogen, the uterine lining began to thicken. And then once ovulation occurs and the egg is released, that follicle becomes the corpus luteum and then that becomes the source of progesterone. So you can see progesterone starts to then rise after ovulation. So what I want you to notice here is several different things. Follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone cause maturation of the follicle. That follicle then becomes a source of estrogen and that causes growth of the uterine lining. Under the influence of a LH surge, this luteinizing hormone surge, the follicle then ruptures, becoming um, the corpus luteum, which then becomes uh, the generator of progesterone. And so during the first half of the menstrual cycle in a young woman, days 1 through 14 typically, right the first day of menses or bleeding all the way up to ovulation, that's a time of more estrogen relative to progesterone. And then after ovulation is a time of more progesterone and estrogen or more progesterone than estrogen. But you also notice at this time both estrogen and progesterone are high and this causes all the changes associated with female metabolism. That is really important to understand. Now here's what's really interesting. Estrogen and progesterone also have an impact on some of the fat burning and fat storing hormones. In particular, estrogen makes the body more insulin sensitive, meaning that starchy foods and fatty rich and starch combinations that release a lot of insulin which can cause fat storage are less likely to happen when estrogen is around in higher amounts. And estrogen and progesterone both make women less responsive to cortisol, which can also help them uh, from storing fat. This is one of the reasons why women have smaller waists than men, because estrogen and progesterone together decrease fat storage around the middle. Now that's important for you to understand. I know not everyone loves the science of this stuff, but I do want you to understand this so you can understand what happens at menopause. What begins to happen at menopause, especially at perimenopause, is you have times where the ovulation does not occur. And so what will happen is you don't get enough follicle stimulating hormone or luteinizing hormone to mature the follicle. Therefore, when the luteinizing hormone surge occurs, the follicle does not necessarily rupture or their luteinizing hormone surge does not occur and the follicle does not rupture. You don't get the corpus luteum. So you're having periods of time where you get no progesterone exposure. So the first thing you need to know about perimenopause is that is a time of estrogen exposure without much progesterone exposure. And then as perimenopause progresses and you move into menopause, what happens is you don't get any ovulation anymore and estrogen starts to decline as well. Both estrogen and progesterone are falling at menopause, but I do want you to see that there's going to be periods of time where there's more estrogen 
relative to progesterone, which is very different than what happens in the young women where there's an estrogen dominant time and a progesterone dominant time. So progesterone is the first to decrease right around the perimenopause and then estrogen falls next. And then what's really interesting about this is testosterone, insulin, and cortisol begin to have a greater impact because progesterone and estrogen are falling. This is really important because what happens is a situation that looks like this. There's a decrease in estrogen, a decrease in progesterone, an increase in testosterone, and a more stress reactive, more insulin resistant fat gaining formula for women at menopause. And so what we're really looking at here is the fat gain that becomes such an issue, especially the fat gain around the belly for women is really a result of this first progesterone decreasing, then estrogen decreasing with an increase in testosterone and more stress reactivity because of cortisol and insulin. Now, one thing I want to say here is that when I say an increase in testosterone, what I mean by that is testosterone has fallen too, but there's a relative increase in testosterone relative to estrogen and progesterone, whereas estrogen and progesterone would have been much, much higher than testosterone in a younger woman. Now they're not as high, as high as they were in comparison. That's what we mean. So it's a relative increase in testosterone, not a total increase in testosterone. The truth is all of these hormones decrease. It's just that you end up having more estrogen relative to progesterone and more testosterone relative to estrogen and progesterone than there was previously. And all of this results in fat gain around the belly. The other thing that happens is in the brain, your major relaxing neurotransmitter, which is called GABA, as well as your focusing brain chemical dopamine and your self-esteem and relaxing chemical serotonin, all decrease. They fall at menses and at menopause. And one of the reasons that that happens is because there is receptors for both estrogen and progesterone all over the body, including the brain. And what this can cause is mood changes and cravings as well, making it even more difficult for women at menopause to stay on any type of diet and for any diet to work the way it once did. This is an important understanding to have. Brain chemistry changes, metabolic changes, all leading to weight gain, especially around the middle.